Hi, welcome back. I know that we've done a how to start a sourdough starter video, but I had mentioned in it that you can order dehydrated starter and I had not tried that. So I thought it might be fun to try it together. Um, this is a company called Northwest Ferments. I had never heard of them before. They were on the Azure website. Feel free to pause your screen here to read all that. Um, I didn't know anything about the company, but I tried it and as you'll see it turned out amazing. So I highly recommend at least their sourdough starter. They sell a lot of other things. I don't know if they're good or not, but <laughs> feel free to try them and let me know. This one turned out great. It doesn't look like much, but <laughs> it really came back to life. The instructions were very clear, easy to understand. It did not say anywhere in the instructions to discard, but I assume every time you feed it, you're discarding it because that would be the natural thing you do. Um, so I will write that on the right hand side also to discard as you feed it along. Here we're just going to put the starter granules into some water and just wake them up after they have been dehydrated and mailed halfway across the country. <laughs> Maybe it needs a little extra help. I was not sure what to expect with this, if this would take a lot longer to get going. But as you will see on day two, day two, overnight, it more than doubled. I mean, I was just flabbergasted, I completely blown away because when you start a starter from scratch, you're just mixing flour and water. And from day one to day two, and sometimes to day three, nothing happens. It looks like nothing occurred <laughs> and this you you're gonna I just you're gonna be shocked it was amazing um, I chose to use here hard white wheat I was not sure at all what kind of wheat they used to do their sourdough I'm sure it wasn't freshly milled flour they don't say that anywhere on the website or the instructions so I just went with hard white but I mean you do you feel free to do 30% rye, 70% hard red, or you know, whatever. You're completely in charge of the taste you want. This stuff, it never looks appetizing, does it? It looks like old oatmeal or paste or something, but it ends up making delicious bread. <laughs> so I just tried to make sure everything was really stirred in there. It said to stir vigorously and, you know, more than you normally would to kind of just wake up all those little dehydrated granules. So I attempted that. It's hard with instructions like that. How much is uh, enough? How fast is vigorously? <laughs> so best guess, but that's why we're doing it together. We'll see if I did it right or not. <laughs> so we're just going to let this sit 24 hours. Now, I apologize. I got into my routine. I woke up. It was early. We had a busy day and I just went ahead and started feeding it and got halfway through the day and I thought, oh my goodness, I did not get the camera out. I didn't film me doing it, but look at how much that rose up. That's incredibly more than doubled, if not tripled. I mean, that's phenomenal. But day two, day three, and day four are all the same. You're gonna take 40 grams of the starter that's in the jar, 40 grams of whatever flour you want or mixture of flours, and then 40 grams of water, and then mix it up, put it in a jar, cover it, and let it sit for 24 hours. And whatever discard, whatever leftover sourdough starter you have, do whatever you want with it. I, I added uh, a ton of water to it, <laughs> and then uh, go throw it in my garden, which sounds ridiculous. I feed my flowers with it, or my vegetables, or whatever's growing. Um, I would not recommend doing that to planted flowers in a flower pot inside your home. I, While well, I think it's good to add different yeasts and bacteria to outside that has its own microbiome, <laughs> probably that might cause a mold issue or something inside your house. But, uh, you know, <laughs> I like to find things to do with it. You can even, in your discard, you can throw in a, in a batch of cookies or pancakes or whatever you're doing. It, it certainly won't hurt it whether or not it helps it rise or anything, it, um, if it's newer starter, it will not hurt it. I have a clean jar there. I kind of rotate jars. Um, 
I don't feel like stopping what I'm doing and washing out the jar or doing anything to it. So I just fill it with water and soak it until I do dishes. I don't have dishes in the morning, so I wait till I have actual dishes to do and I just do them then. So I always have a clean jar because I just keep the one with starter in it and the clean one on the counter because I guess I'm kind of lazy <laughs> that I don't feel like cleaning it right then. But, uh, you know, to each their own, right? <laughs> I have things to do in the morning. I, I don't feel like washing. <laughs> so as you see, day two, three, and four, very similar. And, you know, this is, it's not tricky. I try and just level my starter every morning. You do not have to draw a line. I mean, you're going to see if it rose or not overnight by the residue. As it goes up, it clings to the side of the jar. You can see the residue of, you know, how far up it went. You'll be able to tell, but, um, you know, it, it's a handy thing to do if you feel like it. If not, that's fine too, whatever you like. <laughs> we all do our own things our same way. I kind of think it's nice to talk to other people and see what they do or I'm sure y'all comment if you do anything different I, I like to hear how people you know we learn things from online now but we used to learn things from our moms and our grandmas and it's uh, every family kind of does it different so I'm excited to hear if y'all do anything or what kind of ideas you have for your discarded sourdough starter I think Honestly, the way this rose correctly, it smelled correct, it just looked right. I think I could have um, fed it a lot the night of um, the third night. Sorry, I'm stumbling over my words here. I think I could have fed it enough the third night and baked with it on the fourth day. I really do think it would have turned out just fine. When I start my sourdough starters, I usually wait seven days before I bake with them, even if they're rising right. Uh, this one, I, I waited till day five, but I think I absolutely could have done it day four. It's just a really good starter. Or, you know, I mean, it had already been started. It was just dehydrated, so you don't have to wait as long. So day five is a little bit different. We're going to take every last bit of sourdough starter that we have in our jar and weigh it out. And then we're going to add equal parts flour and water. So I think this was 110 grams total. So then I add, added 110 grams of water and 110 grams of flour. Uh, and then uh, I had enough to bake with the next day and have leftover because you always want to have leftover sourdough starter so you can keep it going you know, and pass it to your kids and grandkids. Um, and here, you know, I think it's kind of funny. I'm recording this so I get to maybe one day show my grandkids, look, the sourdough starter I'm giving you, here's where I started it all those years ago. Oh, the silly things we dream about. <laughs> I think that would be kind of a neat thing. But uh, yeah, 110 grams and I did hard white wheat. I just thought I'd stick with it this first go round. I do plan on using it with rye and trying some kamut and some different things, but for the first bake, you know, safety. <laughs> now, this jar is ridiculously big. I think it's a gallon jar. You do not need a gallon jar. It's just what I had next to me. <laughs> you know how you just reach for the closest thing. That's what I had. So please do not feel that you need this massive <laughs> oversized jar. It will not rise that much, or if it does, I want to hear about it. <laughs> because that would be fun. Um, but it's what I had, so that's what I used. I'm also making kombucha, so that's why I had that next to me. <laughs> so we are ready to let this go overnight and bake in the morning. Okay, so this is our sourdough that we have uh, reconstituted, rehydrated, and grown together. And I just kind of wanted to end this beautiful uh, sourdough experiment with a nice boule that I made. And uh, you see my horrible, horrible blade skills here, but <laughs> I just wanted to show you, you know, you can get a really pretty rustic loaf with the sourdough. And um, man, it just, it smells so good. I'm really impressed with this. Uh, to me, the taste is pretty standard sourdough taste. I don't, I guess I was kind of thinking it'd be a, you know, whatever San Francisco is supposed to be known for, but um, 
it's it's really strong and it rose the bread very well or helped the bread rise. I don't know grammatically what's correct there. Um, but I love it. It did its job. It did it really well. It smells wonderful. So now with our bread, it is really hard to get those big bubbles in there, those big air holes, just because our bread is so, so, so dense. And I kind of plop this dough into the pan so you see how it's much more um, compact right here and, it, and it's bigger out because I accidentally plopped it into the pan. So it didn't, it, half of its rise, or not half, probably that much, um, just went down. But boy, that smells good. So I just kind of wanted to finish off our series here with a picture of what you can make with it. 